Are there any other uh, quick announcements for the good of the organization? Okay. Oh, I'm Jeff. So, we'll start with my disclaimer, which is probably the, the most important part of the whole presentation. So, this material is for education purposes only. You know, consult a professional before acting on any of this presentation. I'm not an accountant, attorney, nor am I affiliated with any government, state, or NSA organization. <laughs> so, it's for your own advice. All the material I think is accurate, but in fact it's really my opinion. This is my view of the world that we're going to talk about. So, take it with a grain of advice. A little background on myself. I'm one of the Silicon Valley engineering guys. I also uh, went to night school, did one of those MBA degrees at Santa Clara. Long engineering career at IBM. But basically, you know, from product development into the marketing. I worked on the business side in the planning area, looking at business plans, making uh, those type of decisions. In the last 10 years, I've been trading uh, fundamentally uh, and all kinds of courses along the way. So way, way too many classes and such. And I have a business-oriented background. I've always had that. I started out mowing lawns when I was 10 years old. That's how I made my money. And actually moved into a, my first brick-and-mortar bicycle stop store at age 13. So I've always been business oriented. So all this comes, thinking about business as a business is a natural thought pattern to me. It's not necessarily a natural thought pattern to anyone else. We're going to talk about a mini business. And we can talk about this. I believe what we're going to do for this, this is what we're going to be doing as a group. The idea is to start about talking about a business. I don't think you can be successful in trading if you don't approach it like a business. And, uh, but for us, we want to do a couple of other things with SVOG. We want to be able to have a common something to talk about in the meetings. We'd like to get more audience participation. So I think talking about this business, actually trying to run the business, kind of along the side with our regular meetings, uh, will be a good way of getting that. So, so learning, keep in mind, there is no intention for this model to be correct. This is a learning vehicle that we're going to grow the model so that we all learn together. And at the end of the period, it ought to be really good. But it will be a contribution from all, everyone. Otherwise, I can just tell you what it is, but that's not as interesting. So. We're not necessarily smart. So we're going to run through this. Well, that was a little quick. Kind of every quarter, we're going to spend a, a little more time on it. And on our record meetings, we'll spend about 15 minutes, kind of like we do the intro charts. And we'll kind of say, well, where are we? Do we need to make any business decisions? Like stop trading, do a different strategy, we'll do that. But most of the work we want to do outside of our regular meetings. So tonight, remember the email uh, announcement. We'll talk about doing some more work on this at Denny's at, over on, on Matilda and, and 101. Tonight, after the meeting, we'll talk about you know, how do we expand this and keep going. Or we can decide to have other meetings at other times or little groups. So don't know exactly how to run all this. It's our first time to try it. But I think it should be very productive if we can make it work. So every quarter we'll spend more time on it and move on that. So we'll talk about business goals, administrative decisions, measurable milestones, research development. I like to talk about manufacturing plans. Many people would call those trading plans. But I think a manufacturing plan is a, it's a play on words that I use. Some people really dislike that particular term. But I think that in, what I talk about it comes as a, a broader spectrum. I'm going to explain what I mean by that a little bit later. So it gives us a way of doing it. 
I think of a manufacturing plant as everything there is in order to run that strategy. And this is really important. We will be doing actual trades, or at least paper trades. And it's important, we're going to do those so they got something to track. So we can see if we can actually do trades that will meet our, our set of expectations that we create tonight. So these will not be things that you should trade because we don't know if they're good, good trades or not to start with. But second of all, there is no intention to make them and publish them in such a manner that it would become trading advice. So keep that in mind. But we need something that we're going to track so we're actually trying to run the business. Okay, tonight's going to break down into <coughs> pretty much what I've already explained is we're going to, as soon as I get to this little bit of introduction here, we're actually going to go through the, the business model and we're going to try to make initial assumptions in order to build our set of expectations. And if we can get through it without too much turmoil, we'll actually try to launch at least a first position tonight. That's very aggressive. So this is basically a re-summary. I'm going through these charts really quick. I have a lot of charts. Part of the reason I did that is I will go through quick and talk. You'll get the charts. We'll be on the website. You can go back and reread them in detail. So they're basically partially background and partially the memory. Day. This is basically a, a resetting. Steps one through three we'll do, and then we'll have the break. Steps four, five, and six we will do after the break. They're probably the more, more challenging ones because getting you guys to volunteer has always been like drawing, pulling dragon teeth. Okay. Now to the meat of the topic. So what we're going to talk about, what's the plan, why a plan, a basic structure, and then adapting that. So this is really key. A business plan is a set of written statements that describe and analyze your business and provide detailed projections about its future. There is nothing in here that says it has to be right. This is about your expectations. It's about setting it down so you have something to measure against to find out if you're achieving what you really want to be achieving. One of the best books about writing business plans <coughs> is put out by Novo Press. Now, my edition is the, was the seventh, and that was in 2005. They republish this every so often. I just haven't changed that slide or bought a new copy. Uh, it, it, back then, it was $35. It's a book about yay thick. That's about a three quarters to an inch thick. It has way too much detail, but it has a lot of background stuff. Uh, there's several other good books. We're going to talk about, so that's a reference, but it's built for a general business. We're going to break that and try to bridge from the standard concept of what is a a classic business plan like I do in an MBA program or like that book describes and kind of cut that down to what's important from a, a trading business perspective. So why do you do the plan? It's really to help you work out the details and put them on paper. It gives you a way to measure the performance <coughs> and it has other uses. You can, if it's a good plan, you can use it to raise funds. And the other thing that it's really good for is maybe communicating with your significant other and say, here is what we're doing. It's a way, it's a communication vehicle so that you can do that. So if you build a plan, I'm going to tell you that we're going to build a plan in 30 minutes. The plan will not be right. Your plan will not be right if you build a similar plan. But it will never be right, because you never know what you don't know. But you don't want to spend six weeks or a month or a year <coughs> building a business plan. It's an iterative process. You get your ideas down, you start working, you start learning, and you go back and figure out what works and what doesn't, and you revise the plan. And that's what we're going to talk about. Classically, business plans 
describe uh, success factors, market descriptions, human resources, <coughs> products. The book has, a, most books that are talking about real business plans have chapters on every one of these topics. And it, you roll it out over five years. We're not going to do that. We're, we're going to do many of these things. We're going to bridge it down to a much smaller concept. So here is my view. A much simpler, easier to get your arms around and think about what you're doing. I divide the world into four parts. Essentially, I think about what is, what is it that you're doing. Every business has a management concept. Somewhere you make strategic decisions. This is, uh, in, in any other company you would call it, this is a uh, top management, decides what goes on. Um, you decide why you're in business. We're going to go down, delve down a little bit deeper, but it's about the decision making process, which is effectively <coughs> the discretionary. It's about the vision of, of where your business is going. In this case, our trading. I look at another quadrant where you spend a lot of your time. We'll call that research and development. This is where I think you spend the bulk of your time. It is, it's discovering the new strategies. It's the back, it's the actual work of figuring out what you're doing. And we'll talk about this in a little bit more. And then I talk about operations, and you heard me use the word manufacturing. I use the word operations and manufacturing because this is where you execute the plan. I think of, of trading as a manufacturing which has all the pieces. It's a rigid set of rules, it's got money management, it's got all the pieces that you do. You, you go out and you plug money in on this end, in our particular case, and more money comes out the other end. At least that's the plan and what we're supposed to be doing. And you have lots of these. And what you do is you allocate money to the, the plan you like. If you don't like the word manufacturing, you can call it anything you want. There are a lot of books, and uh, I should give, I didn't create this presentation, a list of, but there's about a half a dozen that are really good books on <coughs> trading as a business. Okay, and I'll, I'll talk about those from time to time. And, and I'll make that list and make it available. Uh, in the course of the literature, the reason I like to talk about manufacturing is you'll hear the word business, trading, and plan. They get all rolled up together, and the same words get used for multiple meetings. So by changing the, the view of the model just a little bit so that we're talking about this, we know exactly what we're talking about, and you begin to think about the parallel bridge. It, it's a lot like Coddle does and a lot of these other, if you can look at the problem from multiple perspectives, you often get a different view. It's the same information. If you want to call it this area, this operational area, a different set of things, the trading floor, you use whatever name you like. I just happen to like manufacturing works well for me. And no business is, is a business without the fourth component. And the fourth component is always business controls or finance, if you like. And I, I talk about this as business controls and finance because we talked like last, last month, uh, Rob talked about risk management and, and money management and guidelines and do that. Someone has to do that. That's actually not part of the real training, but you've got to measure that. So the responsibility for coming that goes over in what I call business controls. Every business has these types of controls. So we want to build some of those. And what we do in this area, the type of work we do, this is in the old movies, you'd see the, the accountant with the green eye shade and the sleeve protectors and the single bolt hanging down. You know, he, there with all these books and counting. It's an important part of how you measure your business and measure success. So you put it all together you basically have, here's a framework within which we're going to do all the work that we do trading. So I'm going to show you, without going to gory detail, how to build a trading model, how to build the expectations. So the first step is the management and planning. So 
this part quadrant. Essentially, what you're doing here is the top-down set of decisions. And the first thing you want to do in your business is you want to decide why you're there, who you are, you make lists. Why are you going to be successful? And what's going to stop you from being successful? That's what we call barriers to success. You need to build this vision, something that's further out than tomorrow or the next trade. I like to think in terms of five years. That's so far away that you can't really visualize it, but it's a great place to be looking. So, you got to know yourself too, because what is the right vision for someone else is the wrong vision for someone, a different person. So you got to figure out what your requirements are. The framework works for everybody, but everybody will build a different plan. If I give you my plan, the one that I've developed over the last 10 years, it's a marvelous plan for me, but it changes all the time. And it would not necessarily be a marvelous plan for anybody else, so I'm not going to share it. You got to build, we'll, get, we'll work with the scaffolding here, and we'll get the structure, and you'll build your own plan. You know, you'll build the walls, you'll color the walls the way you want, you'll furnish it the way that you think is the right way for you. But these are the high level decisions. It's what top management does. So, the first step is to write a small paragraph or two stating what your business is and what its objectives are. State how you're gonna do that. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna name the business. Really important to name the business. Because once you name it, it's no longer your responsibility as you, the individual. It's the business. The business has its identity. So you can blame the business for the reason you don't have time to go do anything else. You can blame, and you gotta be schizophrenic too. If you're not a little schizophrenic, this is not gonna work well for you. Because if one day you're, you're the manager, the next day you're the drone. Because you're down over in the man manufacturing area, actually putting out these things. Sometimes you're wearing the, the white lab coat over doing research and development. And sometimes you got those green eye shades. So you've got to play the different roles in doing that. So I'm going kind to of break those out into the different role models. So an example of how you might do this is you might create something and call it uh, Big Head Capital. We're going to choose a name of our own tonight. And it's in the business of trading the capital markets for financial gain. That's pretty simple. The stated goal is to make 2x return per year, one half the rate of ROI, that's return on investment, goes to grow the capital base, and the rest goes to Big Head to go spend in Maui or some other place. Pretty simple business objective. It's finite, it's measurable, it's actionable. We're going to make one of those, and we're not going to spend much longer than I just did then. Okay, the question always comes up about businesses. What about business types? There are many businesses. We're not going to talk about that tonight. I can talk about that. <coughs> but the reason you choose different business ent entities is for tax structure, liability protection, uh, it affects the, the state and federal filings that you do. And as soon as you add, add your business, there's a certain amount of overhead that you have to create, which is not, not the core trading, it's the managing the business. But that's beyond the scope of our quick and dirty. For the sake of our discussion tonight, and the model we're gonna build, we're going to create a, a sole proprietorship. Because it's the simplest form of all. It has the least protection of all, but it requires no extra filings and paperwork. It's pretty simple. <coughs> it comes out and it goes on your Schedule C for your tax return. If you do nothing, and you don't create an entity of some kind, you've got a hobby. You're not really in it for the money. And that's the way the IRS looks at it. But I'm gonna tell you, Regardless of type, whether you create an entity or not, 
You ought to treat the business as if it is one. And what does that mean? Operating like an entity means that you separate bank accounts, you separate, you have to look and feel of a business. It has its own identity, which is different and separable from your own. So that's distinct. That, so the IRS or anyone else can look at that and say, oh, I can see that that's what this, this thing does. It's not commingled with you, and they can't tell the difference of where you begin and your trading business start ends, or starts. Or circles back, maybe. And part of that is you need to create the business reports. Business reports is the look and feel of the business, the logo, stationery, monthly accounting statements. Okay, let's talk about how to create a vision. 